Gallagher with G3 Investors. It's uh, Thursday morning, January 18th, 2018. And as promised, this is part two of the psychology, psychology of stock markets explained. This is what I call my version of it, which is much more simplified than the one that has 14 or 18 or 12 different segments of, of the psychology. The way I look at it is uh, if we go back and look at the last three bull bear market cycles, we start from this purple line here, which, you know, the, the market is in the doldrums, uh, despondency, depression, whatever you want to call it. But you have a base at the bottom. The market takes off and the bidding machine begins. The bulls are in charge. So that's the basic question I always ask myself on a long-term view. And this is certainly a long-term view because we're looking at a monthly chart of the S&P 500 from 1993 to, to 2018. And uh, so this first phase, who's in charge? Now the reason that I don't have a, you have a big correction here, but I don't get excited is because it it's not a 20, 25 to 30% correction. So those are normal corrections in a stock market on a long-term view. Point. In essence, if you go back and look at 1982 to 2000, okay, there really was no what I would consider a cyclical market cycle or bear market cycle there. It was all just a simply straight up. And so this is just a continuation of that, but I, I cut it off here in 1994 so we could take a look at it. But basically, this is period one. The bidding machine is charged, is in charge. The bulls have the charge. Now, the topping process. This is a hard one to, to figure out because it's really complicated. But basically what happens, you see a quick series of high, higher, higher highs, higher lows, and then that begins to change. And, and then you have this move right here, which wipes out all three of those prior highs. And you can see, if you look back this, it never happened all during this period of time. Okay, it doesn't have to be three peaks. It's, it can be two or three. This one had three peaks. And then we look at the next one, and this is what I call the topping process. Okay, so that's the uncertainty. That's, and generally, you'll see the evidence when I get into it, but there's a lot of evidence out there. You have high PE ratios. People are bragging. They're, everybody's a genius. All the things that we went over in the last video on this are, are prevalent. Okay, and we're starting to see some of that now, but there's really no sign of a top here. We'll get to that in a minute. But the third phase, the weighing machine happens. Okay, now the bears are in charge. So what happened is you have this little drop here. It's not little. Maybe that's a 15, 20% drop. But it doesn't take over these highs. It doesn't go back up here. And it goes lower and lower. And then finally you have your, your capitulation. Then the market bottoms. You get a period of despondency and depression. It can be varying lengths. But this W formation, that's that's fairly common if you look in history. Uh, this is a fairly common. And, and the process begins again. Once we pass that peak right here, there's a new bull market. And you can see it never, never breaks that 20% rule from 2003 to 2008 even. Okay. This was a peak in seven and this was eight. It looks like. You know, if you go to various market indexes, one was higher than the other. The S&P, this one happened to be the higher one. But again, when it broke this right here, okay, and it broke those double peaks, you'd never seen that happen before. There it's happening again. So now the bears are in charge or the weighing machine is in charge. And there you go back again. Now what really scares the bejesus out of me and the reason I got this green line here is this low is lower than that low. This high, and it's really hard to see this, is higher than that high. So we now know we have a new high that's higher than this high. Well, my friends, I hate to say this, but if, if, if what happens always happens, or usually happens, this low that we're going to have sometime in the future could, could conceivably be lower than this low. Now, that's if once we have the topping, topping process and what happens, I have no idea that that's going to happen, but something that did happen here 
this was near a 20% correction. So was this one. Okay, and here, right here, it looked like, you know, we had this triple top here. So that was what I considered a false signal, and, I, and it did fool me. I got out here, but then when we crossed over and got in here, I got back in. So there are things called false signals, but why I knew this was a false signal? Because this correction was, was light. It wasn't always near 20%. I think it was 14% or something like that. So that, there you have it. It's just really that simple. I mean, don't make it complicated. The more complicated we make the investing process, the more we're frozen like deers in our tracks, and that's a bad place to be, folks. Now, I'm going to take a look at something. I'm going to, the next part of the psychology and understanding bubbles, the psychology of markets during bear and bull and bear markets. Oh, here, real quickly, you can see the lower peak. You can see, you know, we haven't had this, this bottom here, which I expect. Now, maybe we won't. Maybe it'll only go down 10 or 15 percent and it'll just continue to go high. Well, guess what? We'll still be in phase one. But, um, you know, the, the general rule for G3 is that you have three market highs and three market lows to complete a cyclical market cycle. And that's looking at 100 years of history on the Dow and the S&P 500, as far back as I can go on the stock market stockcharts.com or whatever the charting system you use out there, it doesn't matter. They all look the same. But um, my point here is the next thing we're going to look at is what causes these bubbles. And you'll notice I've had, I have three things here. This guy is taller and longer than this guy. This is Fed Chair Alan Greenspan. He was our Fed Chairman from August 1987 to January 2006. Ben, helicopter, Money Bernanke was from February 2006 to January. Whoops, I got a zero in there. That should have been a comma. Sorry about that. Or a semicolon. 2014. And then there was Janet Yellen, who was our, still our current Fed chair, but she's been replaced by Jim, Jerome Powell, who's the new nominee and will likely be confirmed, I don't know, sometime this month or next month. But anyway, those are the three Fed chairmen. And when we get into the next segment, of what causes bubbles, you're going to see that these people had a major influence on the bubbles and the markets in general. This is Greg Gallagher with G3 Investors, wishing you good luck, good trading, successful investing in 2018.